we in India have two very big states for Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, which are very much helped by UNICEF as well as the World Health Organization. UNICEF started its project called Angan, meaning Kota, where the children were to be educated and brought up in a proper shape. This project is not working at all for the children, but all the money goes into the pockets of all the corrupt people who are in charge of that project and the children do not even get 2% of what is being said for them. Same with the World Health Organization, which is sending medicines and equipment to India. These medicines are sold in the market and are completely used by the recipients for their own gains. The same happens to the WHO equipment, so the poor people never get any benefit and they remain all the time helpless. All this money is called dirty money, but most of the clean sits back. A large part of the growth a large part of the dose which, we, which, which the World Bank gives to the developing countries is also siphoned back to the personal accounts of the corrupt officials maintained in Swiss banks. Thus, all these developing countries are indebted to the World Bank but have no money. The money is in the Swiss bank. So, I would request the viewer to take this up with a Swiss bank and request them to return all such money which has been siphoned to the People and give this money to the UN so that the UN can utilize it for the education of women and other purposes as well as what is to be due to people and are very effective vigilance. One has to have a very good network of people, especially women, who are involved and who are honest, compassionate and who would like to make the best out of this money helping the women who have to achieve social equality. The main work of women here is to create a good society that would enjoy peace better. <coughs> Immorality, corruption and violence are the two horrible monsters which are eating up our society. I would blame the mothers of these for corrupt and immoral persons because they fail to in their duty as mothers in their child. The loving training of the mother is the first and most effective influence in shaping the children into beautiful children. Mothers who never try to guide with great concern and love, or the wives of the daughters who are falling into the fear of the men or of the destructive culture, have not done their duty as integral members of the family to strengthen the moral fiber of the men. It is important also to see how children are treated in these two cultures of East and West. What we see in the East is that the children who listen to their mothers, if they are not under fundamentalist culture, this culture relates relegates women to the level of an inferior human being, fit to be dominated by men and children. In the West, also the same thing happens. Children don't respect their mother. Neither do they listen to them. I feel this is because generally, generally the Western women spend more time looking after their body and looks than on looking after and loving their children. The real between the mother and children weakens and breaks. It is for this reason that many children become street urchins and wives. Fortunately, there are still many families in the East and some in the West who deeply defy the corruption in trends of today and look after their children and bring them across. But still I must say that the children in the East are not that much doing as they are in the West. The reason also is that in the East there are many people who have not taken to fundamental culture or to the Western culture and have a very good society and produce children who are exceptionally good, though this number may not be very great. But whatever culture they have inherited since long traditionally is very much ingrained in them and to, to them the moral value system is the highest, more than money or power. <coughs> the West is full of problems. Though they have money, they don't have peace within them. The truth is that women are the potential power of every civilization and everything. It is evident that women are the creators and the preservers of the entire human life. This is the role which the Almighty God has given assigned to them. <coughs> Seeds cannot create anything by themselves. It is the mother earth which provides the flowers and the fruits and other bounties. Similarly, it is the women 
who create a child, who not nurtures the baby and eventually brings up the citizen of tomorrow. Women must therefore rank with motherhood as the edifice of the entire humanity. Unfortunately, men have utilized muscle power to gain a dominating position over women. They have not recognized that women are complementary and equal, but not similar partners in, <coughs> in human endeavors. <coughs> a society that does not recognize this fundamental truth and does not give to women their rightful role is not a civilized society. In my own country, there is a saying in Sanskrit, Ketra Narayya Pujante Tatra Ramande Devata, which means that where the women are respected and respectable, there resides the gods of our religion. So it is for us at this moment to understand the value of this great power that is given to us by our faith. But what do we find, whether it is peace or the best? Women have not been able to give a full manifestation of their greatness. I am not suggesting at all that the only role of women in human society is that of the mother, the procreator and the preserver of children, or that of a wife or a sister. Women have a full right to participate as equal parties, partners in every aspect of life, social, cultural, educational, political, economical, administrative, and the rest. In order to prepare themselves for this all-pervading role, they must have the right to education in all branches of life. But if they are mothers, they have a great responsibility towards their children as well as their society. Men are responsible for politics and economics of the country, but women are responsible for the society. Women can also support men. <coughs> they can make leading part, of course, in any position. But it is very important that they should not forget they are women who have to manifest deep motherly concern and love if they become manly and aggressive. The balance of the society cannot be made. At the same time, I must admit that while we ask for the rights of women, we must also stress the fundamental duties of women to the human society. If the women in the best of those who are educated in the West, also some others are educated, I have gone to the other extreme, have gone to the other extreme when they are taking to political, economical or administrative to com compete with men. They have become much too selfish, self-centered and ambitious. They have no more their soothing, pleasing qualities which can bring peace and balance. On the contrary, they become dominating, pleasure-seeking in leader. They are far more worried about their physical attraction than about having a pleasing, sweet and dignified personality. They give in to their base herself, must faster than men, wittingly or unwittingly. All this leads to chaotic societies and children go into street churches preparing for wars. <coughs> what we need is a balance between the two extremes. We need women as equal but not similar partners with men, but with a subtle understanding of the nature of men and how to bring them into the center with their inner balance. We need balanced women in order to have a balanced human race with peace within itself. You might say all oh, this is excellent in thought, but how do we achieve this state of balance? How do we <coughs> stem the tide of diseases, corruption, immorality, immaturity and violence? How do we end the present state of conflict and confusion? How do we bring about peace within every mind and heart? <coughs> I very humbly submit that there is an answer to these questions there is a new way. Or to permit, should I say, the president of the ministry? Yeah, if you can just help them, because we have three more minutes. You have three more minutes. Whatever I am going to tell you now is not to be taken for granted. You should, of course, have your minds open at times and treat whatever I am saying as a hypothesis. If this hypothesis can be proved, then you have to accept it as an honest person as the absolute truth because it is for your benevolence. <coughs> it is for the benevolence of your family. It is for the benevolence of your country and for the benevolence of the whole world. I am here to tell you about the last breakthrough of our evolution. This breakthrough of our evolution, of our evolution is in our awareness, has to happen in this modern time and has been moreover recorded 
in the writings of many Christians. These are the times Paul has the decadent time launched Paul by great saint Vyasa, who has received the Gita. And it is the decadence of humanity that we see around in every way possible. And unless and until we improve that, what cannot be avoided. Now I would like to tell you the secret knowledge of our inner being, which was known in India thousands of years back. For our evolution and spiritual ascent, there is a residual power within us, which is located in the triangular bone at the base of our spine. This residual power <coughs> is known as Kundalini. Though so the knowledge of this power was available thousands of years back in India, the awakening of the Kundalini was done traditionally on an individual basis only. One guru would give an awakening to one sister. As a result of that awakening, what happens is that you achieve your self realization your self Secondly, when this power is awakened, it rises and passes to six satisfactory energy centers <coughs> in your body, nourishing them and integrating. Ultimately, this power breaks through the fortunate bone area, called as the Talu or the Brahmananda, and connects you to the all pervading power of divine love, which is described in the Bible also as the food trees of the Holy Ghost, also in the Quran as group, and also in the Indian scriptures as Paramitaitan. Patanjali has called it as the Tambara Patra. Whatever the name, this is a power which is all pervading, which does all the subtle works of living through, process of evolution. The existence of this all-pervading energy is not felt before realization, but after self-realization, you can feel it on your fingertips or at the center of your palm or above the functioning bone A. Moreover, this process has to be spontaneous, sir, sir means it and sir means what. That means the right to get this human with the all-pervading power of divine love is the birth right of every human. Our mental energies are limited. Our limited mental energy, which is linear in movement and has no sustenance of reality, reaches a point and stops. From there it through land. And all the mentally linear movement comes back to us as a punishment of time. So now we need more energy, higher energy, deeper energy, and for that this happening has to take place if you don't want to have another war. I must say that in the way. <coughs> I have met many people who are true seekers of truth and are fed up of artificial of the Western life. Also, they didn't know what they were seeking from time and they have made lots of things. They have gone to false gurus who have taken lots of money and the people have become bankrupt and mentally and physically handicapped. The one thing you must know that the awakening of the Kundalini and thus achieving self-realization is a living process of evolution for which we cannot pay anything. It is like putting a seed in the Mother Earth to sprout because Mother Earth has the power to sprout. <coughs> this shows in the same way we have the Christianity power in the triangular mode with the three called as segment. This is a three and a half point energy. It shows that the Greeks knew that this was a sacred bone and hence they gave the same thing, name is Jekla. Actually, in some people you can see the standard bone pulsating and the Kundalini very slowly rising. But there are many who have got such radiation. Now this Sir Yoga is working in 65 nations and they have all become extremely useful to each other in their hearts they are integrated and they have become extremely loving and compassionate. I'm sorry I don't want to see more, but the time is over, so I hope you don't mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry that you have to rush over the key topics. You know? Very good. So there are copies of this paper that we can all have. And I think uh, the beauty of it is that it points to a method that we can all use for self-realization that will help us to become peaceful people and have peaceful relationships with others. That's what I gained so far from what you said. I hope I got the right message. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much.